Hi, I'm Mark Camosio, Gunmark TV. Um, I've got what I consider quite a special rifle here. Um, this was a, a friend at my club who's just um, come across this one. This is the BSA Air Sporter S. And um, obviously it's a matter of opinion, but I'm often boring on the subject, but to me, it's the best looking air gun um, on the market, but, or, or what, what we've ever had anyway. Because there's something about the parallel sides to it, coupled with the, the graceful curved um, body and block and the trigger guard. It's, it's a unique design. The build quality wasn't fantastic on these at the time, but it's just a beautiful looking um, piece of machinery. And obviously you had the, the, air, or the classic air sporter that went on for years, was sort of the, um, you know, you had the BSA Meteor as the junior gun, and then the air sporter was always the main adult rifle from BSA. Um, as a fixed barrel um, tap loading gun. Obviously, when I, mean, I got into air guns in 1979, and I had the Vulcan, Webley Vulcan, and it was all about power at the time. So we had the double page ads from Webley saying as powerful as the Laurel Ailes. I remember those. And at the same time, 1979, that's when BSA launched the Air Sporter, but the S version. And this was all about competing with the Germans. Um, we know we'd had the Viro 35 kicking around for a while and that was sort of ruling the roost. And all the, I mean, if you, you were lucky with an old air sport ever to get about 10 foot pounds at the most, these things would suddenly be doing between 11 and 12. And obviously they're gonna vary, but you know, they were capable of it. So it was, this was all about competing with the, um, with the opposition. And I think I just, just loved the look of it. Um, I did have one of these, sadly got rid of it. Obviously, production-wise, um, they used sort of rolled checkering at the time, so that was apparently done with a machine that just came past and rolled it in. So it's uh, yeah, it's you know, it's nothing special. The wood on this is quite nice. Obviously, it's a walnut stock. It's been sort of lovingly um, coated again by the current owner. As I say it's just it's the the way it's all contoured. Um, I just I just love it. So yeah, you've got it's effectively it's it's pretty well a single stage trigger, but the broad blade on this and that perfect shaping. Mine used to trip. Um, I don't know the actual pull weight, but it was you know I, I was never that. Um, I was always quite happy with it, and it's it's quite a crisp trigger. So surprisingly good triggers. And obviously it's the classic tap loading system. So you've got that tap there. You pull up the tap, drop your pellet in and um, obviously that the problem with that is it relies on alignment so of course it was always going to be a machining a challenge and you get some good ones and you get some others that aren't there then they're not so good but it, the idea is it gave you a fixed barrel and on these you get a sort of a proper um, ball barrel it's quite a big thick heavy barrel now of course with this you've got the it's it's beautifully as i say the parallel sides to it the underleaver is completely concealed and that's the that's part of the design i mean if you look to the modern version um you've looked to sort of the air arms pro sport where they've they've got that concealed air, um concealed underlever and it's sort of a nod to these these air sporters of the day but anyway to cock it unclip that front catch your lever comes down gun into your groin and then a single stroke and up you go and click it back up that catch, incidentally, um, was sort of so well regarded that uh, the good old late, much respected John Wiscombe fitted it to his Wiscombs. Um, I always remember that. And of course, current uh, the, the later models started to use a rather nasty little plastic clip, but um, this has still got that classic feel. So we've cocked it, and now we're going to bring the lever up and drop a pellet head first into the chamber. And there you go. So that's down there and then we close that of course you want to make sure that the pellets drop through um, there was the problem of these shooting better with um, it used to be the British sort of 5.6 millimeter pellet against the Continental 5.5 so Ely Wasp at the time when they were 5.6 were sort of a, a red or BSA pylon pellets were the regular one to use for this but I'll just fire this off Yes, classic feel to it. As I say, that trigger always isn't bad at all, and it's a single stage, but it just trips very nicely. And obviously, the action on this—I'm not sure if he's treated it at all, the current owner, but there's not a lot of twang to it. It's—it's um, it's a very nice gun to shoot. <clears throat> My one—I mean, I used to have one of these. You were lucky to get an inch at 30 yards. And Alan, um, I used to shoot with 
at a British Aerospace Airfield, and um, he had a, he was manager of a factory. I was using a Fireman Bell Sport at the time. He still had um, one of these, and his one would sub half inch of 50 yards. So obviously, if you got a good one, they could be good, but um, the build quality wasn't that great. But yeah, what a classic! I, I absolutely love that. Um, as you may have gathered, but that's the BSA Air Sporter S.